He's been on Oprah in People magazine. He's even had a TV movie made about him. Why? Well, because he has Tourette's, which causes him to have uncontrollable movements, tics, verbal and otherwise. Yeah, and you can hear him right now. He's joining us now because he speaks nationally about Tourette's and his journey. He's a second, longtime second grade teacher, now an assistant principal in Atlanta, speaking today in Renton and kind enough to join us, even though you got a busy schedule. Brad Cohen and a longtime friend of mine, I want to say for the record, thanks so much for coming in. Well, thank you. It's an honor to be here. So so you were telling me last night we spent the night together with our family that your tics didn't start until fourth grade. What was life like for you at that point on? Yeah, you know, um, I started making these weird noises and um, I, I quickly realized that I had this medical condition called Tourette syndrome. And uh, I had to start um, educating people about it. You have to understand, um, teachers were really mean to me. Uh, I got bullied a lot by other students and I had to figure out how to play the game of life. And so I tried my hardest to be like everyone else, but um, it, it just didn't happen that way. But you have a really bah. inspirational story. You took that bah. huge challenge of having this uh, happen bah. to you in fourth bah. grade, and then you really became famous, right? On Oprah and People Magazine and, and, and this movie being made about you. How did that happen? So um, I, I knew I had a story. I needed to share it with people. So I decided to put my, um, my words down into a book and uh, wrote the book front of the class, How Tourette Syndrome Made Me the Teacher I Never Had. And then um, I quickly learned that um, Hallmark Hall of Fame wanted to do a made for movie uh, about my life. And I was honored that, you know, like you said, Oprah wanted to have me on. And I think they just wanted to share how uh, people have disabilities and people have challenges in life. And it's not about the challenge that you have, it's what you do with it. And uh, I never chose to have Tourette's syndrome, but I, I did choose to accept it. And the way I accepted it was I decided I was gonna educate as many people as I could. Um, starting off as a second grade teacher and, and just teaching kids that they can go out there and follow their dreams, much like I was able to follow mine to become really that teacher that I never had. And we talked about your challenges as a kid. What about well, your challenges now? What is it like for you to live with Tourette's here in your 40s? Yeah, you know, it's not easy. You know, you go into restaurants and people stare at you and um, you jump on an airplane and no one wants to sit next to you and you want to go to a movie theater, but you know, I get kicked out of movies because it, it's just not a place for people that make lots of noise. But I want to be like everyone else. I have a family, I have a wonderful wife that believes in me, and I have two amazing kids in first and third grade, and I try to be like any other parent, and uh, I try to show my kids that, that despite the challenges I have, I could still be a great dad. How were you able to uh, you have that confidence to be able to overcome that challenge and believe in what? yourself and sort of what? silence the people who are, what? you know, either making comments or staring at you or anything like that. Yeah, you know, at, a, at an early age, I didn't want Tourette's to win. I went to a support group and at the support group, people were just talking about how they, they wanted sympathy and they wanted people to feel sorry for them because of the medical condition they had. And I didn't want to be that person. And my mom always taught me that we got to have a positive attitude. We're going to persevere through those tough times. Go out there and follow your passions in life and be the best that you can be. And so again, I, I just never wanted my Tourette's to win. And uh, I, there were so many times that I went on, a, on an interview to become a teacher and, uh, and people said I couldn't do it. And I didn't want to look back and say I, I can't be a teacher because of Tourette's and ultimately on my 25th interview I was hired as a second grade teacher. If people haven't seen the movie it was about 10 years ago it's what? really uh, powering, powerful and empowering and you see the struggles and the triumphs what? and then now you speak across the country to different uh, groups a lot of kids like today you're speaking to kids in Renton what what is your message to the kids and the parents and teachers who will be watching you speak? Yeah you know I it's important for them to know that that, that I have a disability, but they may have a challenge or a disability too. And I want them to look at, at someone and, and know that they're not alone, that uh, there's a champion out there fighting for them. But at the same time, they need to know that they can overcome their own challenges. They can go out there and follow their dreams despite uh, what other people say. And, um, and really to educators, to remind them that it's, it's what I always call like the power of one, that all it takes is for one person to make a difference in the life of a child. And I challenge those teachers to be that one person, uh, to be there for that kid, that Brad Cohen that could be in every single cl classroom and show them that um, they can help that kid make a difference. Also, you overcame a picture from 1992 when you and I met in the uh -oh. summer when we were 18. We have to, here it is, that's you in the upper left corner, me oh in the my. bottom left corner with a, guess a teddy bear that was like our, our trip mascot or something, I don't even remember, but uh that's our, there Summer of 1992. Thanks for embarrassing me. Yeah, I appreciate it. A, a parting <laughs> gift. Thanks so much for joining us, Brad. Have Thank a great you, time. It's great so to be here. Inspiring. Cheers. Thanks.